Hello everyone, today we will learn the SketchUp web app. This video is for beginners who have no experience of SketchUp but want to learn the software. We don't need to download SketchUp for basic use, rather we can just use the free web version. So let's open SketchUp in our browser. Go to Google, type SketchUp web, press enter. Click on the first website SketchUp for web. Click on start modeling. You need to sign in with your Google, Apple or Microsoft account. I'll sign in with my Google account. So this is the basic interface of SketchUp. This main screen is our main 3D window. Over here we have our title toolbar. Underneath over here this is our search button. Below that we have toolbar having all the drawing tools. On the right we have palettes that can be switched on and off like this. Below we have the status bar. Always keep an eye on the text displayed here as it gives you a clue about the options that are possible with your selected tool. Over here we have the value control box. All the dimensions and numeric values appear here. This is our standard SketchUp model. It is different in different versions. Next to, next to him we have our axis. We have our red axis showing the width of the model. Green axis showing the depth and blue axis showing the vertical height of the model. Let's use the line tool to make lines. Click on the screen and a line is appearing. Click again and the line is made. As you notice the line command is still making lines. So let's continue making, making a few more lines. I will try to make a line parallel to this red axis like this. Now let's make it parallel to the green axis like this. And now let's make it with the blue axis like this. Once you are done making the lines, just press the escape key. Let's take the mouse back. It is recommended to use a mouse with a scroll wheel while using SketchUp. In order to zoom in on the screen, just turn the scroll wheel upwards and the camera will start to zoom in. And to zoom out, move the scroll wheel downwards like this. In order to rotate, press the scroll wheel and move the mouse and the camera will rotate on the screen. Now to pan, press the scroll wheel again and also press the shift button from the keyboard and now the camera will pan around like this. I want you to get used to these navigation tools and explore around the lines that we have made and see how we have made them on different axes. There are different methods to sele select an object in SketchUp. The first and easiest method is to click on that object like this line I have clicked and it gets selected. The second method is by the left selection window. Just click your left mouse button, keep it clicked and move your mouse on the object that you want to select and that object gets selected. You can select multiple objects like this using the same window. In order to deselect just click somewhere else. Another method is the right selection window. Again press the left mouse button and this time move the selection towards the right side like this. Now you notice only the line that was completely engulfed in the window get selected not the other one while in the left selection window all the lines that were touching the window got selected like this. Let's just clear some space by deleting these lines. Select the lines and press the delete button. All geometry in SketchUp is created by lines and planes. Let's use the rectangle tool to understand that. Click on the screen and make a rectangle like this. Let's go back to the mouse. Now if you notice we have four lines on the sides and one simple plane in the center. Each geometry in SketchUp is made up with these lines and planes. Right now this rectangle is a singular plane and it's very two dimensional looking. Let's use the push pull tool to make it into a cube. Just click on the push pull tool, bring the mouse on the plane, click again and now you see the singular plane is getting pushed, pushed and pulled into a cube. Click again when you're done. Let's go back to the mouse tool. Now before we proceed any further I want you to pause this video and just play around a little in the model space and get used to the navigation buttons that we have learned and experiment with the tools that we have learned so far like the push pull and the line command and just play around a little bit and also I want you to like the video cause that really helps me a lot. Next up we will learn the move and copy tools. Just select the cube that we have made by the selection window. Go to this move option, click on it, 
Now click on the object that we want to move and move the mouse and the object gets moved where, wherever we want it to. We can move it on the axis like this red X or the green axis or the blue axis or we can just move it randomly like this. Click on the mouse again to finish the command. So this is how we move an object. In order to copy, it is a similar process. Select the object again. Go to the move command, click on it. But this time, press the control button from your keyboard. And, and if you notice, a plus sign has appeared with the cursor. Now click on the object again. And you see the object is getting copied this time. You can copy it again and again by the same process. Just click the control button and make sure the plus sign is on and then copy it again like this. Now if you want to ro rotate an object, just select the entire object, go to the rotate option, click on the object and rotate the object at the angle you want. If you notice, the object snaps at 90 degree and 180 degree and 370 degree, but you can stop it at any other angle that you want. You can even give your own angle by just typing it. Suppose I want to give an angle of 45 degree. I'll just type 45 and press enter. And my object is rotated at a 45 degree angle. Let's just move it a bit like this so it can be differentiated easily. Now let's understand components and groups in SketchUp. Select the object that you want to create in a component or a group. Right click on the object. We have an option of make component and make group. Let's make this one a component, give it a name, ABC, OK, and select the other object, and select the other object, right click on it, and this time make this one a group. Now we have this object that is in a component and this one that is a group. In order to understand the difference between both of, both of them, let's just copy them first, like this make a few copies like this now remember these are component these three are component and these three are groups suppose i want to edit this group i'll just double click on the group and this opens in an edit box i want to use the push pull command on it so i'll just push pull it like this and use the mouse button to exit now suppose i want to edit this component now i'll again double click on it then i'll use the push pull like this but this time if you notice that all the three cubes are being edited at the same time this is the difference between a group and a component that we edited this group the other groups did not have any change in it but when we edited this particular component all the other associated components got the same edit automatically now i want you to pause the video again and try out these new things that we just learned try them on your own and please subscribe to the channel so you can get more informative content like this. Next up, let's explore some other draw options. Just click over here and we see different draw command options over here for circle, arc, two point arc, arc, polygon, three point arc, pi. I'm not going to go in depth of all of them cause this is a beginner's video. I'll just use the circle one here, click on it and click on the screen and a circle is created. If you notice, the value control box is showing values when I move this circle, it's showing its radius. Suppose I want to make a circle of radius 10 feet, I'll just type 10 feet and press enter and a circle of radius 10 feet is created. I'll just use the push pull to give it a 3D ge geometry like this and I'll make it into a component by just selecting it, right click and make a comp make component. Click on it, give it a name again, one, two, three. Okay, now let's go on to the scale command. Click on the scale command. Suppose I want to scale up this cylinder that I have created. Click on it and you notice different grips appear around this cylinder. If you select any of these grips on the corners, the cylinder will scale up or down in a uniform manner. If you select any of these grips, then the cylinder will move in a non-uniform manner like this. Let's just scale it up in a uniform manner. Click on this grip, keep it clipped and make it bigger like this. You can even make it smaller like this or bigger like this. 
You can even give us scale multiple. Suppose I want to scale it up to 1.5. I'll just type 1.5 and press enter. And the cylind cylinder is scaled up 1.5 like this. Next up, we have the offset command. Let's make a rectangle to understand it. Let's ma make a rectangle and use the push pull to make a cube like this. Click on these three, three dots. Click on offset. Now on which whichever plane you move your cursor, the it gets selected. Click on the plane and you see an offset to the external lines of the plane is being created. Give an offset that you want with your mouse or give a value. I'll just use my mouse for now like this. Now you notice another plane has been created inside and there's another plane outside. Let's create another plane inside. This time I'll give a numeric value of I think two feet and press enter. And you see three planes, this outer plane, then this mid plane and the third plane are created. Let's just play around with these planes a bit. Use the push pull command and make it go inwards like this. Make this plane go outward maybe a little bit like this and a little like this. I just want you guys to explore and go crazy a little bit. Make something random. Maybe like this. This looks a bit artistic. I don't know what this is, but still. Now let's learn how to add materials. For materials, click over here. As this is the free version, we don't have a lot of materials, but these will do for now. Click on the material you like, suppose this one, and then click here to add that material. Like this and this. Maybe select another material, suppose this one, like this and this, and add that material to the model that we have created. Maybe click on get another material like this, this, and uh, this, this. Okay, this looks good enough. Click here to close this palette. So let's clear some space a bit by deleting these. Select them and delete them. So this is the model that we have created up till now. SketchUp has pre-installed models of its own. These can be accessed by clicking over here. This website is called 3D Warehouse. You can search for any model or any object that you want in 3D format. Suppose I want to add a car. I'll just type car, press enter. And different models of cars have appeared over here. Select any model that you like. Suppose I like this one, click on it. You can view it in 3D, just click it. And you can see the car in 3D. Scroll down, go to download. And you see that car model has been downloaded in our working space. And we have it over here. You can place it anywhere you want. You can edit it with all the commands that we have learned. Suppose I want to scale it up a bit. I'll just select it, go to scale, scale it up uniformly like this. Okay, looks good. Now let's learn how to export this model that we have made out of SketchUp in an image format. First, let's find a good view viewing angle that we can export. Maybe move this model up closer to like this. And uh, I think this looks a good angle. Click over here on these three lines. Go to download. Click on PNG. Export as PNG. Export. And this file has been exported in my system as a PNG file. You can see. Now you can just share it or send it to anyone as a normal image. Let's go back to our SketchUp. You can save this file using this save button. Yes, per all. You can save it here in your SketchUp web account. Give it a name. Save here. You can also save it in your system by click on, click on download and go to SKP. SKP is the extension for SketchUp files. Save it in SKP so you can open it in any computer or laptop having SketchUp installed in it. So that's enough for today. I hope you liked today's video. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to see more informative content. Take care. Goodbye.